Hi everybody, I'm Hannah. Thank you so much for watching. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a brand new perfume launch and that is by the brand Charlotte Tilbury. And she's launched six new perfumes that came out today. And um, there did used to be a Charlotte Tilbury perfume many years ago and that one got discontinued and now they have launched six new perfumes and I have them all, I'm gonna talk about them. Now, the launching of more than one perfume at a time is kind of something that it has been trending in the perfume industry for a little bit. Um, you, there's something for everybody instead of just launching one thing with one point of view. And I can still remember when I used to be a huge Tom Ford fan and I used to look forward to seeing what the newest launch would be. And I remember the shift from there being one perfume launched at a time to then there being three perfumes launched every season or sometimes two. And I remember feeling a little bit alienated as a consumer and a fan because to me, it, like I could see that they were trying to get more of a market share and I understood it, but as someone that looked forward to each and every launch, it kind of felt like there was nothing special anymore and it was just three things and and there would be three things or four things or two things every single season. And I, I mean, Joe Malone is another example of that where, you know, there was a shift from launching one perfume that was really special to launching three perfumes or five perfumes even. And I think as a consumer, if you already love the brand, it kind of feels like the thing that you bought last season isn't special anymore because now there's three more things and people are going to forget about that one special thing that was really cool, um, you know, not even three months ago. And then what ends up happening more often than not is these older perfumes end up at discounters. They're way cheaper. You kind of feel like an idiot if you were one of the first people that bought them and you paid full price. Um, and then there's, you know, something, something new, people are going to something new, and then that's going to be discounted a few months later. So it's always interesting, something to pay attention to when brands are bringing out many perfumes at a time. In this case, we have six perfumes and, um, they kind of feel, it feels like a solid collection that's not seasonal it's it's not trendy it's it's just six different um i would say scent profiles that appeal to six different kinds of customers from the little bit that i've smelled these and worn them in the past little past few weeks that i've had them i was able to get them a little bit earlier i would say that they are all beautiful and there's something for everybody and the best thing about the collection is that there is not a Baccarat Rouge 540 dupe in sight, so they did not go in that direction, but they've kind of covered some really popular, beautiful, appealing scent profiles, and I will take you through each scent and let you know what those are. So this is the outer packaging that the perfumes come in. This particular one is called Calm Bliss, and then when you open it up, you can see the bottle in the center. Of course, I think there was plastic around all of these. And on the inside, there's a little bit of a description of the perfume. To a tranquil oasis where peace and harmony fill the air, a calm infusion to help soothe your senses. It's a feeling you'll want to share. Float on a meditative symphony with musk, lavender, and notes of tonka bean, a watery accord that takes you to the sea. It's an ambient, serene dream. Like newborn skin that smells so pure and lotus flowers in a lake, it's blissfully relaxing and calming, a peaceful, restful escape. So there's a little poem inside each of the boxes. The boxes are beautiful and worth hanging on to, in my opinion. And, um, you know, for the average consumer who's going into store and knows nothing about these scents, they're going to be able to open it, read the little description, and kind of get a sense of what the perfumes are and how they're supposed to smell. So let's go through them all. And the price point is a hundred and fifty US dollars per one hundred ml bottle, and this is what the one hundred ml bottles look like. This is a glass bottle. It's very beautiful, and then the top is um, plastic, and then there's you know 
this detailing around it. The sprays are really nice and fine. I'll spray one. So really nice sprayer actually. And these are all Eau de Parfum concentrations, which is great. It's kind of, I think, what is standard and what you would expect from a perfume brand launching today. This detailing was something that was part of the older Charlotte Tilbury perfume bottles also. I don't, I never got any of those perfumes or that one perfume. So I only remember seeing pictures of it. I'm sure you could find pictures online if you were really curious, but she seems to be really enamored with this genie in a bottle and perfume being um, kind of like a potion that or a spell puts a spell on people like that kind of imagery seems to be really part of the perfume part of the brand so that's something that has been consistently there for a long time and is not something that is new to just this collection okay so as you can probably guess calm bliss is in fact a um mineral aquatic kind of perfume and it's really pretty. It's very, very wearable. It's almost like a feminine version of cool water. Uh, if the notes are musk, lavender, and tonka bean, I don't know why they said lavender instead of just lavender. Because what is the difference? Like, does the average consumer, I can't tell you, what's the difference between lavender and lavender? Why not just say you're going to smell lavender and then leave that in the air? So you do get lavender when you first smell this. Tonka bean, I don't really get a lot of tonka. Um, and then lotus flowers, again, yeah, I don't really get a lot of lotus flowers either. I just think that this is a very aquatic kind of perfume. Makes me think of the ocean. There is a freshness about it. It's not very sweet. And if you want kind of an easy wear that's great for every day, that's very office space, safe then this would be a great one to pick i would also say that this leans pretty unisex like this doesn't feel super feminine to me i think a man could easily wear this so if this if you're looking for something that you can share with someone then this would be my first pick and that one is called calm bliss the next perfume is called joyphoria and i'll read the description a portal to Joyphoria in pure paradise you will be. This is happiness bottled, one spritz and you'll see. Like a ray of golden sunshine, you will glow with delight. Balmy, warm, and radiant, turn your face towards the light. It's escapism, celebration, and pure abandon with a sunny bouquet. A blend of ylang ylang, solar vanilla, and jasmine sandback to attract happiness to your day. Indeed, this is a pretty happy perfume. I would say it's very beachy and a floral beachy at that. Um, it really reminds me of Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, but not at Tom Ford prices. So that's good. Probably a little bit less plasticky than Soleil Blanc and a little bit sweeter, a little bit richer and definitely more long lasting. Um, I really like this perfume. I'm always looking for a good beachy perfume that's not too sunscreeny, and I think this one is really, really well done. And you can see now what I mean by them offering um, a perfume for different scent profiles. So if you're looking for a beachy perfume, this would be the one to try. If you're looking for an aquatic perfume, which I don't know how many women are looking for something aquatic, but if you want something in that vein, then Calm Bliss is the one for you. And they really are trying to offer something for everybody and something that's kind of seasonless. So you could wear this, this is a more summery perfume, but you could wear it all year round. And there's definitely gonna be the customer that only wants this kind of scent and they're just gonna buy this again and again. The next scent is called Love Frequency. There it is right there. This is what the bottle looks like. Again, this bottle happens to be clear and pink because this is a rose perfume. I'll read the description. Follow your heart and your dreams will come true. A portal of love for me and for you. This enchanting fragrance radiates love. It soars inwards, outwards, and all the way up above. 
delicately hypnotic like you're in a trance with rose essence, pink pepper, and cashmere wood. It will make your heart dance. Bathe in the glow of love as two hearts beat as one. Let love be your frequency. A new story has begun. Okay, so rose essence, pink pepper, and cashmere wood. Yes, absolutely to rose. Again, why didn't they just say rose instead of rose essence? Maybe they're just trying to make the rhyme follow the meter of their poem. Now it makes sense. Okay, that's why. This is a rose oud, okay? It's not very oudy. It's definitely not fecally or barnyardy at all. This is that synthetic oud that you get in many, many, I would say, designer um, oud perfumes. It is, you know, this whole brand is going to be sold at Sephora stores or at Nordstrom or, um, you know, in Canada we have Holt Renfrew, so it's going to be there. These, I mean, these places have perfumes that are very safe, and all of these are very safe perfumes. This one is a very feminine, sweet rose oud, and there's not a lot of richness to it, but I would say that the oud makes it a little bit heavier. Uh, again, I'm not someone that usually likes rose oud perfumes, but I do enjoy wearing this. It's very likable. It's really pretty, and it's a solid rose oud. It's a solid rose perfume. I think it's really hard to do a rose perfume that's new and fresh and exciting, and I guess it's good that they didn't go the rose patchouli route because there's like a million rose patchoulis out there. And I think the market research says that people don't like patchouli or people aren't like huge fans of patchouli. Um, so I can see why they didn't go that direction. And I don't know, this, this seems pretty interesting for me. I think that it would be a huge hit in people for people that like more Middle Eastern style fragrances maybe, or are looking for a rose with some depth because that is what the Oud does. It does add a, a good amount of depth to the perfume. And so that is love frequency. Yeah, love frequency, that's what it's called. I like it, it's not bad, <laughs> I'll say that, I like it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite one, but um, they're all good. They're all really good and they're all very wearable and nothing is overdone or, you know, too much. Like these are all kind of perfect. Like they kind of hit every note, which is nice, right? It's. I wonder if I can interest you in more sex. Let me read the description for this one. It's the secret to seduction with a harmony of sandalwood, spices, and musk, an alluring aura of attraction with a sexual accord that transports you from day to dusk. Sensual, bold, and woody for the senses, it's a carnal treat. A feeling flows through your body and puts a spell on everyone you meet. With a sexy, hypnotic scent trail, it can put you in the mood. A captivating chemistry you cannot deny, mystery and magnetism. Now, darlings, don't be shy. Okay, sandalwood, spices, and musk. I'll be really honest. I hate the name of this perfume. I just think it's very cringy. But the scent profile is, again, appealing, wear wearable. This is kind of a heavier, more potent sandalwood and musk perfume. I don't really get a lot of spices from it, but um, it does feel really rich and better for cooler weather or for nighttime. So that one is called More Sex by Charlotte Tilbury. I really like this next perfume because I think it's a scent profile not offered to women very much. I think that when brands come out with perfume for women, everything smells like a cupcake or vanilla. And this next one is actually a green perfume, and I think that that is great. I think there needs to be more green perfumes on the market. Uh, so this one's called Magic Energy, and I'll read the description. 
Awaken your senses with a boost of fresh energy, notes of cypress, bergamot, and palo santo accord. It's love, light, and purity. Call upon the earth and sky to reawaken a new you. Embrace the life force of the forest, and you should feel more grounded too. A portal to pure energy, it will help you unwind, unlock a new lease of life for everyone to find. So how amazing does it sound? Cypress, bergamot, and palo santo? Yes. Yes to all of those. I think there's been an overuse of Palo Santo in a notes pyramid. I won't say Palo Santo the ingredient because we don't even know if they're ever using Palo Santo. But definitely Palo Santo in a notes period pyramid is overused. But they got my attention. Mm, and this one's so good. Definitely one of my favorites. It does smell a little bit like Palo Santo. And you get the freshness of the cypress. You do get the feel of a forest. And um, it's balsamic and fresh, but not fresh in the way that Calm Bliss is fresh. It's not an ocean freshness. It's a walking in the forest, being in a garden, that kind of freshness. And it is quite uplifting. It is really, really nice to find this kind of perfume in a selection my prediction is this one will be the least bought because <laughs> i don't know if people really understand these perfumes and their place in a scent wardrobe you cannot smell like vanilla all the time it's the way that you can't wear you know a ball gown to work every day unless you you're like on stage every day but you know you don't dress formal all the time you don't eat ice cream for every meal there is a time when you need something that's fresh and a little bit more serious almost right and and that is what i love about magic energy i really love that they've included this kind of perfume because there are lots of women out there that don't want to smell like candy and cupcakes and fruit. Like there is just something about wearing a perfume that's none of those things. And again, this is another one that's a little bit more unisex or genderless and could be worn by anybody. And it's just a really, really beautiful perfume and definitely one of my favorites. I would say it's not my most favorite, but it's definitely my second most favorite scent profile that they've come out with. I love this one. Probably this one's going to be discontinued. That's my prediction. I don't think anyone's going to love it as much as I love it. So my favorite perfume from the Charlotte Tilbury perfume collection from this new launch is Cosmic Power. And let me read the description. A cosmic power from the stars, a portal of protection. Enter a realm where you have the power to set your intention. It's like a sprinkle of pure stardust of which we are all made. So rise up to the sky and let your frequency cascade. With a blend of amber, frankincense, black pepper, and spices, it will give you the inner con confidence to take on anything that arises. And then it says, spray me for cosmic power right up here. So this is Cosmic Power, and you can see why it's my favorite. It is <laughs> kind of a note profile that I really love, and it absolutely does smell like frankincense and spices, and um, it's very peppery and bright still at the same time. There's definitely a touch of vanilla, a touch of benzoin in here, and this is the one that I've worn the most so far because I love incense spicy, ambery perfumes and it's not too hot to wear this one. Um, I'll say that for me, I feel like the lasting power is not great, but I can safely put four sprays on and I'm not overdoing it at the same time. So that's lovely for me because I can just keep smelling it. I wouldn't say that it's my favorite incense perfume or my favorite spicy perfume. Like for me and in my collection, I just don't think that I have so many things that are really good. This is kind of not as good as some of the niche options that I have. 
but I love that they're offering this at a Sephora because there's nothing in a Sephora that smells this good. It is actually a very addictive, spicy, vanilla, warm, um, frankincense-y kind of perfume. It does last a really long time on your skin, even though it doesn't have a great deal of sillage. It's still an easy to wear scent. It's very likable. It's very approachable. And I can see this as being like a gateway amber incense perfume for a lot of people. So if there's one perfume that you try in the whole collection, I would say try this one because this one's my favorite. And then if I had to pick a second one that I really love and I think everybody should try, that is going to be uh, this one, Magic Energy, because it's their green perfume. It's foresty. It's cool. And there's not enough perfumes like this on the perfume market, in my opinion. Again, these aren't exactly cheap and I think that's okay. I think it's really interesting that they have kind of a very approachable look and it's almost kitschy in a way because they're so bright and there's lots of brands that are just giving minimalism and Charlotte Tilbury is not a minimalist. I mean, if you have watched her on YouTube or Instagram or any of the videos that she even made before she was famous, she is like a more is more kind of person. And I think I, I like that about her makeup too, is that you can use things in so many different ways and layer on so much. And um, like more is more, more is just better, you know, and, and you can just really enjoy being a maximalist when you see her perfume and see her makeup collection because it really just gives you the best of everything. I think the makeup is definitely for all ages, but it seems to really appeal to people that are in their 20s and 30s. I think the skincare is really interesting because it smells kind of old fashioned. Like she has some things that smell like gardenia and some things that smell like roses. And she prefers really old school floral scents and kind of old school formulations when it comes to the skincare. And then I think that these perfumes are kind of for your 20s, if someone in their 20s, their 20 year old perfume lover, like someone that's just starting to get to know perfume and loves perfume and wants to wear it and maybe they already wear the makeup and here they are and they're they've got a love for perfume and they don't mind spending 150 dollars usd on a big 100 ml bottle because they're going to be wearing so much of it and i think the price point really places this on par with a lot of the designers that you see in in the same stores where if you're getting you know a gucci perfume or a prada perfume at sephora that's probably how much you're going to spend and i think kayali is around the same um, price range and also has the same kind of appeal where the bottles are more colorful and really beautiful and and really stand out among um, so much perfume that's out there. So great collection. Like I said, everything is very wearable. Nothing is too strong. And I love that. And that being said, nothing is kind of weak and boring either. I think all of these have a very specific point of view. And that is great. Um, yes, some of these are scent profiles that we've seen before. So for example, we've seen like an aquatic scent profile and we've seen something that's really beachy, you know, but again, it's, it's done really well. So this is a beachy perfume that's done really well. The rose perfume is still interesting. It's not just a boring rose. I think it's interesting that there's no just like straight up floral in here. Like there's no like rose gardenia or like tuberose or anything like that. Like everything is kind of a little bit more modern, a little bit more contemporary, and that's fine. I think that's great. Like I said, these two are my favorites. So if you're gonna smell the whole line, smell these two first, because they are perfumes that I am gonna be wearing more of. And then probably Joy For You, I'm gonna wear a lot over the summer. It's just really pretty and I was I love a good beachy perfume um and yeah so 
Cool new collection. Congratulations to the brand. Again, thank you so much for sending me these. I am really enjoying them and I think other people will as well. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try my best to answer them. And thanks for watching. Bye.